All right, so I've got my finger on the sensor at the back of my Samsung phone, and I've got my FDA approved pulse oximeter right here. So I'm gonna give myself a test and see how they measure up. If you've had a respiratory illness and you can't get to the doctor, then measuring your blood oxygen could be vital. A device like this, a pulse oximeter, can help you tell the difference between whether you're just short of breath or whether you need to go to the emergency room. But can your phone do the same thing? A pulse oximeter measures the oxygen saturation of your blood. This reading, known as SpO2, helps doctors tell how effectively your lungs are getting oxygen into the body and then how well your heart is pumping that oxygenated blood around your body. You're probably hearing a lot about pulse oximeters during the COVID-19 pandemic, and that's because of what COVID does to the lungs. Some of it can just be a sense of tightness in the chest. Some of it can actually be difficulty uh, getting oxygen into the bloodstream. A pulse ox, a pulse oximeter, can give you a little bit of information about how that oxygen exchange is working. Even if somebody doesn't feel bad or look bad, you can still see that they're having some difficulty uh, getting oxygen into their blood with a pulse oximeter. In a hospital, pulse oximetry can help doctors identify which patients might need to go to the ICU and maybe even go onto a ventilator. But a lot of people are riding out COVID-19 symptoms at home. So an at-home pulse oximeter can help them track those symptoms. Now, we bought this device a couple of weeks ago on Amazon. It was about $40. It measures heart rate and pulse oximetry, and it doesn't even need to draw blood. It just does it with light. A pulse oximeter consists of an infrared light emitter and an infrared light sensor, and it passes a um, infrared light through your uh, your finger. And the the way that this works is that um, the more um, oxygenated hemoglobin that you have in your blood means more infrared light will pass uh, will be absorbed, and uh, more red light will be allowed to pass through. And the more deoxygenated hemoglobin you have in is the opposite. So it will allow more infrared light to pass through and it will absorb more red light. Now, these devices do have their limitations. Because they use light, they work better on people with pale skin. People with darker skin might get a false reading. Same goes if you're wearing nail polish, that might give you a false reading. And then there are a raft of factors that can also affect your measurement. Smokers might get an artificially high reading, whereas people who live at high elevations could get a lower reading. But generally speaking, if you're healthy, you're looking for a number between 94 and 100. These devices are great, but because of the pandemic, they are getting harder to find. They are selling out online. So if you're feeling short of breath and you're feeling really sick and you can't get your hands on a pulse oximeter, what should you do? Well, this is where phones and wearables come into the picture. A number of tech companies have introduced SpO2 tracking on their devices to help users get a better sense of their health. Now, Samsung has this on older model phones. I've got the Note 9 here, but it actually goes all the way back to the Note 4 and the S5. Now, I put this feature up against my FDA approved pulse oximeter, and I got a bit of a difference. All right, so this pulse oximeter is pretty easy to use. I just um, Clamp it onto my finger like that and the sensors inside will measure it for me. Press the button and then it just tracks away. And the little measurement there is actually beating in time with my pulse. All right, 82 beats per minute and 98. Versus over on my Samsung phone, the Note 9, well, I just need to put my finger on the sensor on the back and press measure. Now you have to stay still and quiet. Any movement can disrupt the reading. It's actually measuring my beats per minute once again. This one takes a little longer. Thankfully, I don't feel short of breath. All right. And it's given me a reading of 76 beats per minute and 97%. I've had pretty different readings every time I've done this. It's never really gone below that 94 mark, but it's ranged from 96 up to 99. So I do wonder just how accurate it is. Okay, so it wasn't wildly different, but when the healthy range is between 94 and 100, a couple of percentage points can matter. So why the different reading? 
Well, an actual pulse oximeter has two sensors. It sends light from one side and then receives it on the other side. My phone and other wearables, they only have one sensor, so they're sending and receiving the light all on one side. Samsung isn't the only company to offer SpO2 tracking. In early 2020, Fitbit brought out a software update that added SpO2 tracking to its devices, including the Versa 2. It's also on the new Charge 4. But importantly, this only measures variations in blood oxygen. Say if you have sleep apnea and your blood oxygen dips overnight. Garmin offers pulse oximetry too. All day tracking, sleep tracking, as well as on the spot percentages. But they're very careful to say that it's for recreational use only. Now, none of these companies are claiming to sell medical devices. Samsung, for example, lists its SPO2 tracking under the stress setting of the health app. It's pretty important to recognize that this is more of a wellness feature rather than a straight medical measurement. Phones and wearables are good for tracking your pulse oximetry in a general wellness sense, but they're definitely not the kind of device you want to use if you want an accurate medical reading. An FDA approved pulse oximeter like this one is a far better option if you need an accurate medical reading. But if you're buying online, watch out. According to Dr. David Petrino from Mount Sinai in New York, manufactured to FDA compliance is not the same as FDA approved. If you're buying on Amazon, it will explicitly say if it's FDA approved. You can also look for the CE mark on products out of Europe or TGA approval on products from Australia. These are similar to FDA approval and a sign that you're buying a regulated device. But if it's late at night and you're feeling really short of breath and you don't have a pulse oximeter, can you still use your phone or your wearable? I'm okay with them using that to be like, listen, I'm still reaching out to urgent care and this is what my device is saying. But I think that we should uh, really make make people aware that if you're not getting an FDA approved device, then there is a really good chance that that device is not giving you correct information. When it comes to lung health, there are a few signs you can look for without resorting to a device. Are you breathing a lot faster than you normally would? Is it hard for you to finish a sentence, for example? Are you finding it tough to keep up with the conversation or maintain concentration? Is there blueness around your lips? These are all signs that there's not enough oxygen in your blood. Ultimately, you know your own body and you should never put off seeking medical advice just because your phone didn't tell you to.